for the Michael Sermon text will be Revelation 22, 1 in, verses 1 through 2. And he sh showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the in the midst of the street of it, and either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Amen. Thank you for reading that for us, Sister Sydney. <clears throat> None of these things that are mentioned in this text are here in this world. <clears throat> the, the river of water of life, you won't find that here. Or the tree of life, or the, the throne of God and of the Lamb. And you won't find any of those things in this world. You won't find a tree that has leaves that will heal the nations. But now, <clears throat> there's a, in this, uh, the first few verses of this last chapter in the Bible, in John's vision, there's a little bit of a shift in what he sees, a little bit of shift in emphasis. In chapter 21, he was given to see the bride, that is, as, it, as she is being built up by Christ, as she is being prepared for God. So he saw a, a great city with jasper walls, and the walls had 12 foundations that were garnished with precious stones and having the name of the names of the 12 apostles and 12 gates each gate of one pearl and angels attending each gate and the the city was of pure gold shining the the radiance of the glory of God and the street of it was a pure gold so all this is and this is what God is getting this is what Jesus Christ is getting and what he is prepared for, for the Father is for God's glory to shine out in its fullness in this city. But now in the, in the first few verses, first five verses of chapter 22, we're going to kind of shift a little bit and see now what, have, what has God and the Lamb prepared for the bride? That we're going to see that, that they have made accommodations for the bride. There's, there's things here in the city that are of great interest to us and, and are good for us. <clears throat> so the bride is a glorious bride for God. Of course, we, we benefit from being glorified too, but she's also well supplied. Here we see in these verses. <clears throat> so in this we could say, Behold the exceeding riches of the grace of God and his kindness toward us. He redeemed us in order to reign with Christ and to inherit all things with him. So whatever small foretaste of reigning with Christ we have in this world, they're just a small foretaste of the fullness that is to come. <clears throat> we'll know in fullness the exceeding riches of his grace. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him and all the upright in heart shall glory. Isaiah 65, 18, But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create, for I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. In Psalm 36, verses 7 through 9, How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life, and thy light shall we see light. In the 103rd Psalm, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like an eagle's. And Psalm 149, For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the, so let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. This is how the Lord delights in his people. The, we're going to experience these things, these good things in fullness in the world to come. 
These aren't just like nice little sayings that we tuck in our pocket and think about once in a while. This is going to be the experience of the people of God. Now, Jesus said, fear not, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So this is what the bride's getting now. There's, there's some good, good things prepared for the people of God. <clears throat> He's designed the world to come with his children in mind. <clears throat> To keep his children full of joy and peace as Christ has done for his father. He's made, Christ has made his father joyful and blessed. And, and the father and the lamb together are, are going to make their children blessed. <clears throat> At the marriage supper of the lamb, there is going to be reciprocation here now. The, from, from one perspective, Christ is preparing children to bring to his father. From another perspective, the father is preparing a bride to give to his Christ. And we, that the bride is going to make herself ready to, to give herself to the lamb. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of gift giving at the marriage supper of the lamb. Everybody is going to receive wonderful things and everybody is going to be very happy and glad in the world to come. So now in these first two verses, we're going to see somewhat of what, the, what God and the Lamb supply for the bride. Verse 1, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. This is a pure river. <clears throat> Again, there's nothing like this in this world. There's some streams begin on mountains where, where snow and ice melt and and. You might say that's, that's pure water, you know, just the untouched snow that just fell from the heavens and it melts and it's pure water. Well, it doesn't stay pure very long because whatever's on the mountain gets picked up by the stream and carried along with it. So it's, it's not a pure stream by the time it gets to you. Uh, the, those p bottles of pure spring water you buy in the store, they boast that it comes from such and such a spring and these delicious, sweet, pure water. Well, it's, you read the back and it's been filtered before you got it. It had to be cleaned up and filtered. It's not, it's not really pure. But this is a, now we know this is a pure stream because of where it comes from. Yeah, and it's, it's, well, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. <clears throat> Now, some great rivers in this world, I'm thinking particularly of like the Ganges River in India, some, some people consider this a holy river, which is like the fifth filthiest river in the, on the planet. But now the Ganges, at, at its source, it might be relatively clean there and pure, but all along the way, it picks up all kinds of stuff. People bathe in it, animals bathe in it, raw sewage is dumped into it, industrial waste, uh, bodies are burned in it, uh, bodies that are not burned are dumped into it, and all kinds of stuff. People, people want to bathe in this, and they think that it cleanses them. This, this is not a pure river uh, because it's in this world, but the, this river in the holy city, no matter how far it proceeds out, it's always pure. Amen. There's no defilement for it to pick up. <clears throat> yeah. Now, if it could be defiled, it wouldn't be coming from the throne of God and the Lamb. <clears throat> it comes from the origin of pureness himself. So it issues forth in righteousness, holiness, love, peace, and joy. Jesus said, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not given yet, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, if, if Jesus said, and this is something we experience in the present time, if by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, rivers of living water flow out of you, now contemplate on what kind of a river, a pure river, flows out of the throne of God in the Lamb. And th this river is for you now. This isn't a river like a spectacle that like people just go to look at Niagara Falls because it's a spectacular sight. This river is not just for looking. This river is supplied for the bride. <clears throat> it's a pure river, however far it goes. <clears throat> <clears throat> and we don't know, John didn't say how far the river extends, but there it may very well 
extend throughout the whole earth. We don't know. It may branch off in a lot of tributaries. And, and if it does, it's all pure. Everywhere it goes, it's pure. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And we'll have full access to it. All the pure river of water of life flows through a pure city, and it's supplied for pure persons. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. <clears throat> Amen. So this, this river remains pure as its source is pure. Forever and ever now, this stream, this river flows. <clears throat> and the, what does the preceding verse say? Chapter 21, verse 27. There shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So if you want to consider it not only from a, uh, uh, the aspect of distance, how far the river goes, you could also consider it from the point of view of time. For the ages, as the ages continue on throughout eternity, this river will always be pure. Amen. Always. <clears throat> Amen. It's uncompromised and undefiled. <clears throat> and everywhere we see it, Everywhere, it's as clear as crystal. <clears throat> so no one will ever have any reservations about drinking freely from it. <clears throat> Everywhere this river goes, we can say this came from the throne of God and the Lamb. <clears throat> and it's a river. I can't imagine a river that comes from the throne of God to be a small stream or a little trickle <clears throat> or a short river. John doesn't say how far the river flowed. <clears throat> he didn't give us that information. He was, he's inside the city at this point, focused upon the throne, no doubt. <clears throat> but the source of the river speaks for the rest of the river. <clears throat> Isn't Zion, the city of our God, the joy of the whole earth? My, my own thoughts are that it does extend out past the city into the whole earth. Be Wouldn't the river of life then flow throughout the whole new earth? <clears throat> Everywhere the people of God will go in the new world, they will have access to the river of water of life, its tributary streams flowing to every place to fill every new creation with vivifying life. And we have the figure of this in the Garden of Eden. Remember, there was a garden that flowed through Eden, and it didn't just stop there in Eden. It branched off into four other great rivers that went out. <clears throat> and from thence... Genesis 2.10, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. <clears throat> and at least one of those rivers, the Euphrates, remains to this day, which is no small thing considering that since then there, the flood has taken place and many other changes in the, in the surface of the earth. So this is, we're considering the, how great a river this is. It's not a creek, it's a river yeah. flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. <clears throat> So we ought to think about great and glorious things of this river because it comes from the throne. <clears throat> and John saw that it was not just water, but the water of life. <clears throat> A pure river of water of life. So this is not for bathing, for washing. This is not a river for amusement or a river to supply industry, <clears throat> but for life. This, now this river supplies the tree of life. In the next verse, it's planted all along the river. <clears throat> Verses 2 and verse 14 also. <clears throat> so get, this gives us cause to consider eternal life. Now some have considered these things and came up with the interpretation that water of life means that the, the water is moving. They say it should say living water, like a fountain. The water is always springing up or the water is always flowing, but it doesn't say living water. It says water of life. Now it is flowing because it's a river, but, but it's water of life that John saw. <clears throat> he didn't see the pond of life. He saw the river of life. <clears throat> <clears throat> the water is living, <clears throat> but there's also life in the water. Living water and water of life are not synonymous. <clears throat> This is life that is supplied from the throne. Life means more than just not dying. If you consider this for a while, meditate upon this, it's, it's 
very difficult, if not impossible, for us to define life. Because we're always, we're still dealing with death. All of us here are mortal. The, our bodies are mortal. Yeah. We're living in a world where everything around us is decaying and aging and it's corrupt and it's dying. It's hard for us to think of life without also thinking of death. But this river of life, see, we've got to kind of train our minds to think about life that has nothing at all to do with death, that you don't even make a comparison with death, because in the resurrection, we're going to be immortal and incorruptible. Mm -hmm. We won't, there won't be any death. Death's going to be swallowed up in victory. But yet, even with that, there's still a river of life Mm -hmm. coming from the throne of God and from the Lamb. So this is more than just saying you're not going to die. The water of life and the tree of life have nothing to do with any kind of mixture with death or a comparison with death. Someone might ask the question, well, if, if I don't drink of the river of water of life, will I die? Well, that's... See, don't even think about it in that way. That's, that's not the right question. It indicates that we're not seeing it properly. Or how often do I have to drink in order to stay alive? That's, it's not on that order. That's not what kind of life this is. <clears throat> life is not going to be giving us, given us by the water of life, but it will be made abundant by it. I've seen, and you've probably seen too, people in nursing homes that were sorely afflicted in their bodies. They, they could not speak could not move, at least not much. They couldn't feed themselves. They couldn't bathe themselves. They couldn't communicate. They couldn't go anywhere they wanted to go. But they were alive, right? And we might say, that's not really living. But but they were alive. Well, now, this, that's kind of a, a contrast. But <clears throat> in the world to come, now, we'll, we'll live eternally. But this river of life, it, it gives us great joy. It gives us life abundantly. It doesn't keep us alive because we are we are already immortal. But <clears throat> it gives us the good things of God in abundance. It depicts to us the fullness of eternal life in the world to come. It flows directly from the throne of God and the Lamb. It renders at all times and in every place fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore, satisfaction, peace, comfort, the knowledge of being approved and loved of God. This is that river that will make the city of God glad like we have never known gladness before. And the water of life flows abundantly for all of us. John also states that this river flows from the throne, not thrones, but the throne of God and the Lamb. There's one throne from which this river flows, and the Father and Son are in perfect agreement on the supply of this rich grace. Jesus said he overcame and sat down with his father and his throne, and here we see it. <clears throat> Previously, now John saw plagues and wrath proceed from the throne upon the inhabitants of the earth. But in the new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness, there is from God and the Lamb a river of water of life proceeding out to the bride. From the throne comes to the bride the exceeding riches of God's grace and his kindness to us. This is the first of two wedding gifts. The nourishing and cherishing of Jesus for his church is not limited to this time and this world alone. He has ensured our eternal gladness and joy. And the second wedding gift, which again is supplied out of his abundance, is in the next verse, verse 2. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now again, some things we need to get out of the way. The matter of this street seems to cause a lot of difficulty for some people, at least if you read the commentators. Some people, well, a lot of people, insist on streets. Talk about the streets of gold and the streets, and and there's street. You won't find the word streets in Revelation chapters 21 and 22. There's one street. 
So if you can understand that, this it'll clear up the matter of the river and the trees for you also. <clears throat> There's just one street tree covered in chapter 21 and verse 21. It means it's a wide plat or a square. So they're, they're just one of these. <clears throat> and in the middle of the street, right in the, through the middle of the city, the river of water of life flows. <clears throat> so if we think of it that way, then the way this is stated doesn't present any problems. <clears throat> and the second thing that might cause some confusion is that John said he saw the tree of life on either side of the river. Yeah. Or we could also say on both sides of the river. Now if you think of the tree of life as one single tree, well then you're going to have some problems. How, how do you get one tree on both sides? Maybe, maybe it's a real big tree and the branches hang over the other side. But no, it's, it's many trees, but there's just one kind. It's the tree of life. We, now, we could very easily talk about this in other terms. Think of the apple tree. See, what kind of tree is there? It's the apple tree. There's the Jonathan apple, the John of gold apple. There's the ambrosia apple, red delicious, golden delicious, granny smith, etc., etc., etc. They're all the apple tree, but there's several, about 7,500 different varieties of the apple. So, we could say the tree of life, it's not just one tree. All along the river of life is planted the tree of life. On both sides of the river, there's the trees, the tree planted. And it's grammatically correct to say the tree of life because there's just one variety. There's just there's one kind of tree there. It's the tree of life. <clears throat> and more questions might arise over the matter of 12 fruits from one kind of tree. But again... We could use the, the example of our apple tree to see <clears throat> that that, uh, that could work out just fine. <clears throat> there was only one tree of life in the Garden of Eden, but out of the riches of God's grace in the holy city, the tree of life grows all along the river of life. The saints won't go out, won't have to go out of the city and go into some kind of a forest or something to search for one certain tree to eat of. It'll be just, that's the only tree there is the tree of life, and it grows in abundance all along the river. <clears throat> and it's right in the middle of the city. It isn't that heaven is like Eden, but that God made Eden to be a faint shadow of heaven. <clears throat> the Edenic paradise is not going to be restored. That was a temporary arrangement, a faint shadow of the eternal paradise of the new Jerusalem. What God has prepared for them that love him was determined before the foundations of the world, and it, it's eternal and far superior in every way to Eden. <clears throat> I also gave consideration to, the, to fruit trees, <clears throat> which is a pleasant thing. Fruit's quite handy to eat because you just, you just pluck it off the tree, and then there it is. You've got food in your hand. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to prepare it any way. It's just, it's just it's ready for you right there. <clears throat> There's no labor involved, no preparation, there's no waiting, no mess to clean up, <clears throat> no preparation or serving. What God has prepared for us is ready when we get to that city. No one will ever pray in the holy city, restore the joy of thy salvation unto me. It's all, it's all ready. Everything will be prepared. We'll have bid farewell to praying and bask in the delights of the presence of God and the Lamb. This river of life and the tree depict to us that <clears throat> there will be no time when we need refreshment. That's, this is a vision now that John saw. What, what this vision is indicating to us is that there's no possibility where you're, you're going to be needing refreshment at some time or you're going to get tired or you're going to need to be renewed. You're, there's not going to be anyone mope up to the tree of life with the hands hanging low. I need some healing today. Not, no, that, the vision here is depicting that it's abundant. Yeah, There's never going to be any time where you need to be refreshed and renewed and restored and these things because all of, life is abundant in the, new, in the new Jerusalem, in the holy city. It's there all the time. <clears throat> what John saw is that Christ has prepared eternal joy and unceasing happiness for the bride. She's well supplied with the abundance of the exceeding riches of God's grace. The river flows forever. The tree bears fruit and healing leaves forever. 
In a sense, these things are saying to us the same thing that we read back in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Or Isaiah said it in Isaiah chapter 25, verse 6, And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees, well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face, mountain, the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. This is how our tears are going to be wiped away from the river of water of life and the tree of life. It's, it's a matter of weight. The, the glory and the grace of God far outweighs any memories of life in the present world or any troubles or these things that we used to ex experience here. <clears throat> there will be such gladness, joy, peace, and singing in Zion that will, no one will be able to cry. The glory and grace of God is going to swallow up the memory of any sorrow we had here. And if you don't think you could ever get over some of your troubles that you've experienced, there are 12 kinds of fruit growing from the tree of life. Not only that, but the leaves are for the healing of the nations. <clears throat> now, we can only surmise in our meditations about these 12 manner of fruits, one for each month, it says. <clears throat> and it does say 12 manner of fruits, not 12 harvests. 12 different kinds of fruits, that's what it says. <clears throat> and I like this word, this word yielded. <clears throat> it says this fruit is for you, it's supplied for you. The tree of life yielded its fruit each month. <clears throat> Some people are content with the same things all the time. Yeah. Personally, I'm, I'm the kind of person, I like variety. <clears throat> And this variety, again, speaks of the abundant nature of God's kindness to his saints. These months <clears throat> don't indicate that there will be uh, the marking of time in the world to come, <clears throat> but perhaps different seasons or eras or epochs. And no matter what God has purposed for the ages to come, these two gifts for the people of God will remain in place and continue to be fruitful. Every month, nonstop, the fruit of life will continue to be yielded up for the lamb's wife. <clears throat> and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. <clears throat> As I said, no one's going to have a bad day in the world to come. That's what this is saying. This is saying it's not going to happen. <clears throat> Keep in mind, this is a vision. Again, <clears throat> what John saw is that there's no, there will be no need for healing. How could anyone possibly need healing... When the tree of life grows so abundantly in the holy city. <clears throat> John heard this stated earlier, but the, in this portion of the vision, he sees how, how it's accomplished. In chapter 21, verse 4, God, it says, God will wipe away tears from off all faces. But here he's seeing how it's done. It's the tears are wiped away by the river of life and the tree of life and the 12 manner of fruit and the leaves that are for the healings of the healing of the nations. That's how it's done. <clears throat> how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Judah once said when they are in captivity in Babylon. But in the new Jerusalem, it shall be said, how shall we not sing? How shall we not be glad? How shall we not rejoice? <clears throat> Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. <clears throat> and finally, I wanted to compare this also with uh, a vision of Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 47. This reinforces the things that we've seen in Revelation chapter 22. <clears throat> Only Ezekiel saw some, some uh, different details in what John saw. Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house. That's the Lord's house, the temple. 
And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without, unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again he measured a thousand, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand, and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now Ezekiel saw the same river that John described. It flowed out of the dwelling place of God, out of the throne, and it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and it, it would got deeper and broader. <clears throat> In verse 7, says, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and on the other. Then he said unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the water, rivers shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. <clears throat> and in verse 12, by the river upon the bank thereof, and on this side and on that, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. That is, it won't, it won't rot away. <clears throat> it shall bring forth new fruit according to his months. Because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. And Zechariah also briefly mentions this river in Zechariah 14.8. But all these, these two visions depict what flows out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And this, this is for the bride now. This sustains the city. This is, what, <clears throat> this is the goodness and the grace of God flowing Life in the world to come is sustained just as life is now sustained by God. This vision ought to make us thirsty to drink of this river of water of life and hungry for the fruit of the tree of life. And this is what John's vision of the holy city is intended to do. Now probably every bride, when, when she is considering marriage or at the first few days of the marriage is wondering, about her bridegroom, how, how is he going to treat me? What's it going to be like living with the bridegroom? Is he going to be a good provider? <clears throat> Will we always be happy together? Now, these, now our, our gracious Lord answers all these questions for us ahead of time <clears throat> in this vision of John here. That's what these two verses or the, and the, the following verses are talking about, that, that God is going to supply his children. Christ is going to graciously supply his bride yes. with the things that we need. <clears throat> and he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>